Dave York. It's the Beat at Five. Now, here's Joe. Hey guys, welcome back to Feed at Five for Friday. Your featured Friday guest coming up, but first, your hashtag of the day is snake. Have a look. Hey guys, welcome back. We have the Critter Man here with us once again, and today's show is all about snakes. Welcome, Bob. Hi. So what can you tell us about this guy right here? This guy right here is a young corn snake. Corn snakes are common snakes that make really good pet snakes. He's about three, four years old, and they are super, super docile snakes. All snakes generally uh, their most important sense is to smell with their tongue. They can see. They can't hear. They have no ears. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can't bite very hard. They don't want to bite people. They want to bite prey. Now where are they found? Are they around here? These guys are not probably in Pennsylvania. They are found south of here and west of here. Uh, a fairly large range but a wide variety of subspecies and different color varieties. Hmm. This is one that's full grown. Wow, huge difference. That's the exact same kind of snake. Exact same kind of snake. Wow. There we go. The tube on the bottom that opens and closes is his trachea. He breathes with that tube. That's so that he can breathe while he is swallowing a mouse. If you look really closely, you may be able to see some little tiny teeth around the edge of his mouth. And back a little bit further on top of the tube, you may see his tongue. Now, is there any truth to the whole colors coordinating and patterns based on if they're poisonous or not poisonous? You ever hear that yellow on Jack, or yellow oh, yeah. on black friend that, of Jack kind okay. of thing? Venomous snakes in North America are the easiest things to identify. All of them have a big, wide head. Okay. People call it a diamond-shaped head or a triangle-shaped head. Like an uh, arrowhead. But it's, when you're looking at a venomous snake, on this snake you can't really distinctly see where his neck starts and his head ends. Okay. On the venomous snakes, there's a real distinction. The head comes out, gets wider, and then all of a sudden it gets real skinny on the neck. That is all of the venomous snakes, except for that one you were mentioning, the red on black right. or the red on yellow. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's one snake down south that doesn't have a big head, and he is red on yellow, kills a fellow, and red on black is a friend of Jack. There are probably a dozen different rhymes about that. Yeah, I've heard a couple over the years, and that's what makes it confusing. But I just tell people, don't worry about it. Stay away from any snake that has bright colors. Yeah. And rattlesnakes won't bite you until they tell you they're going to. With the rattle? Yeah. I mean, they don't... Snakes don't want to use up their venom on people. They want to use up their venom on things to eat. Do they have a limited amount? Yes and no. Uh, they have a gland full of venom, and there's a limited amount in that, but they can continuously resupply it. They manu their bodies manufacture, like we manufacture more saliva, they manufacture more okay. venom. Right. Okay, this next snake is not a black snake, even though he is black. This is a Mexican black king snake. Wow, that one's super smooth. Okay. He lives in deserts in Mexico. He eats small rodents and birds and things like that, but king snakes will also eat cold-blooded prey like lizards and other snakes. Okay. And you can distinctly tell the difference between him right away and a black rat snake because he has a black really cool underside too. Underbelly. The black rat snake has a white underbelly. When you're looking at movies and you see them using 
a venomous asp, like in Cleopatra movies and things mm -hmm. like that. This is the snake you're looking at. This guy right here will eat mice about as big as my thumb. Okay, so is that um, done by unhinging their jaw? Because I've heard that. That's what people say, but mostly the front of their jaw is not, <coughs> excuse me, is not connected solidly. It has a cartilage connection there and it can spread out and separate. Their jaw doesn't actually unhinge in the back, it just oh. spreads out and becomes this huge lower jaw that surrounds their prey. Okay. Oh, wow. But the uh, California version is banded like this. It's a pretty one. So, the question here I see, it's trying to get away. Uh, how fast are they? Looks Fairly like fast. Kind of moving and pretty quick. If it Fairly was. fast, but not faster than we are. Okay, so you okay. can outrun. The tongue is their main sense. Tongue tells them everything about us. The tongue tells them if we're a threat. Oh. We smell differently when we're nervous. Really? And the things that want to eat snakes, are gen well, predators in general, are nervous when they're hunting prey because they uh, don't know if we're going to get dinner or not. Hey, relax. Arizona Mount Cane is a less commonly kept pet snake because they are often more difficult to take care of. Why is that? Because it is hard to get these guys to eat mice. Generally, you have to feed them snakes or lizards. Oh. And snakes and lizards are hard to come by in enough quantity at a reasonable enough price to feed them. Now, you see how he, on this snake, the black touches the red. Yes. Red on black is a friend of Jack. Okay. This guy is a mimic of a coral snake. His black colors, his black bands separate the yellow bands from the red bands. So he's red color touching black. If he were a coral snake, the yellow bands would be separating black bands from red bands, and the yellow would be touching the red. It would be going red, yellow, black, yellow, red, yellow, black, yellow. But this guy, I am lucky, he won't eat regular sized mice, but he will eat baby mice, yeah. which makes him expensive to feed. Every week he eats about five or six little mice about that big. But I have always wanted to have one of these very pretty snakes. Yeah, and when I had the opportunity to get one that would eat mice, I grabbed it quickly. This guy <coughs> is called a western hognose snake. There is an eastern hognose snake as well as western hognose snake. But the eastern hognose snake is almost never kept as a pet. The western hognose snake, because it comes from an environment that is a little bit tougher. Wow. Okay. Is more cosmopolitan in his diet. This guy will also take rodents, so he'll take mice. But the one thing you want to look at is see the tip of his nose? Yes. See how different the shape is from other snakes? Yeah, it's kind of turned up. Yep. Now, this guy, in the wild, when he feels threatened, will first coil up and rear up like you see cobras doing, cool. and hiss, and make nasty sounds at you, and act like he's really bad and threatening you. And if that doesn't scare the predator, he flops over on his back and plays dead. He has a musk gland that exudes a chemical smell like rotten meat. Hmm. Have you so ever he smelled smells it? dead. They don't do it in captivity. Oh, okay. So I was going to say he doesn't yep. seem like he's threatened right now. Well, no, he, he's, under, he's been handled a lot, so he's used to being picked up and handled. Scientifically, they are venomous. Okay. But uh, for all practical purposes, they're not. Number one, their venom is not toxic enough to kill a human. And number two, they're what's called a rear-fanged snake. Their fangs are not in the front of their mouth, their fangs are in the back of their mouth. Great. Now, do they all have pretty similar lifespans or do they differ throughout the snakes that you showed us today? 
the snakes we looked at today all have similar lifespans. Okay. They're all 15 to 20 years or so. All right. It's a pretty good chunk of time, pretty yep. long time investment. For as, long as, as long as the predator does get them. Right, of course. But is there any truth to um, the movie Anaconda where the snake's no. over 30 feet long? Because that's just something I've always wondered, like in the Amazon or whatever. There is some evidence that some snakes used to grow to be about 30 feet. Mm -hmm. But as a snake gets longer as it ages, and with the human demand for snakeskin boots and belts and purses and so forth, there are no more large snakes. Hmm. The biggest snakes anybody can find anymore are about 20 feet. Okay, it's still pretty big though. Are there parenting habits? Um, do they have a bunch of eggs and then just let them go? Or? Uh, most snakes are egg layers. Some snakes do parent their eggs. Hmm. But most snakes, it's lay and forget. Oh, okay. They lay them. They're on their own. <laughs> either buried in uh, forest loam, sand, loose leaves, or soil, and the eggs lay there until they hatch, depending on what temperature. Usually four to six, eight weeks. He's just flicking that thumb. Yep, that's his way to tell what's going on around him. All right, guys, thanks again for stopping on by. I hope you learned something. Thank you for being on the show once again. All right. Had fun, always good working with the animals. And you guys at home, always stay loud. Well.